Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Yolanda Melody. I don't drink alcohol. I haven't drank alcohol for about seven years. This video is long overdue. I have had a lot of requests to talk about the reasons why I quit alcohol in the first place and generally what my thoughts are about this substance. Now, if you're the type of person that is living your best life, <laughs> you love drinking alcohol on the weekends and you can't bear the thought of living without alcohol, this video might not be for you <laughs> because I'm really gonna go deep into all of the reasons why I avoid alcohol like the plague and it might be a tough pill to swallow for some people. However, if you've been considering quitting alcohol altogether, if you're struggling with alcohol addiction and you want some reasons why to quit, or maybe you're at that point in your life where you want to become the best version of you possible, then keep watching this video. Believe it or not, not drinking alcohol hasn't really caused me to have to sacrifice anything other than alcohol. I've still been to nightclubs, not a lot nowadays, but <laughs> I've been to plenty of parties in the past and not drank alcohol. It doesn't have any kind of impact on my social life negatively at all. And whenever I've gone into these social settings where everybody is drinking and they see that I have a glass of water or a cup of tea, they always kind of look at me very confused and they say, you're not drinking alcohol. And then it leads on to the questions. And because I don't want to offend anybody, I usually give some kind of vague explanation as to why I don't drink. And it usually goes like this. I have a really addictive personality and I'm crazy enough without alcohol, so I don't need it because I'm trying to keep the vibe high and I really don't want to offend a bunch of people that are drinking alcohol and tell them all the reasons why alcohol is poisonous. <laughs> So a little bit of background on my journey with alcohol. I started drinking very early on when I was about 14. I was quite off the rails to say the least. And I drank very heavily between the ages of 14 and roughly about 16. I wasn't really very health conscious at this point. I didn't really know anything about nutrition or food. I was quite reckless. And up until that point, I had a very, very good metabolism. I was able to eat a lot of high calorie food and not gain any weight but the first thing that put me off alcohol was the weight gain that it caused. I found it pretty strange that the one thing that had actually broken through my fast metabolism was alcohol and it was at that point that I realized that alcohol doesn't just cause you to gain weight just because of the calories. There are a lot of other factors that play a role which we'll discuss later on in the video. So I went through a period of time where I quit alcohol for about three years, then started drinking alcohol again, and then quit all the way up until now. And it's always been a huge talking point with people because they find it so unusual. For a lot of people, drinking alcohol is like eating dinner. You just do it. Alcohol has become such an integral part of our society. It's been normalized as something that everybody does. A lot of people have a drink every single weekend and a large contingent of people drink every single night. And most of the time, it's not really looked at as an issue or something to question. A lot of people just think it's normal. But just because something is normal doesn't necessarily mean that it's good. So let's just look at the basics and see what alcohol actually is. An alcoholic drink is a drink that contains ethanol, a type of alcohol produced by fermentation of grains, fruits, or other sources of sugar that acts as a drug. The consumption of alcoholic drinks plays an important social role in many cultures. Doesn't sound too bad, does it? But let's have a look at this. If you ask the question, is alcohol toxic to the human body? It says here, an abundance of alcohol can harm the liver, whose job it is to break down harmful substances in the body. This can lead to hepatitis, jaundice, and cirrhosis, which is a buildup of scar tissue that eventually destroys the organ. Alcohol may cause kidney, bladder, and prostate inflammation. Okay, doesn't sound too good, but it clearly says here, an abundance of alcohol. So they're only talking about extreme cases. 
right? So then you ask the question, is alcohol a form of poison? Alcohol is a toxin that kills cells such as microorganisms, which is why we use it to preserve food and sterilize skin, needles, etc. Alcohol kills humans too. A dose only four times as high as the amount that would make blood levels exceed drink driving limits in the UK can kill. Some other side effects from alcohol include high blood pressure, heart disease, stroke, liver disease, and digestive problems, cancer of the breast, mouth, throat, esophagus, voice box, liver, colon, and rectum, weakening the immune system, increasing the chances of getting sick, learning and memory problems, including dementia and poor school performance. So it appears that the more that you scratch below the surface, you start to uncover that alcohol is isn't really doing anything good for the body. In fact, it seems to be damaging it in many different ways. So then you ask the question, why are people drinking something that is damaging their body? and providing absolutely no nutritional value? Most people's answer is, it's fun. And then you can see information that softens the blow and enables people to continue drinking by telling them that as long as it's in moderation, it's okay. So if you ask the question, what is considered a drinking problem? This is what they say. You are drinking too much if you are a woman who has more than seven drinks per week or more than three drinks per occasion, or a man who has more than 14 drinks per week or more than four drinks per occasion. And then if you're over 65, you're okay as long as you don't have more than seven drinks per week or more than three drinks per occasion. What I wanna know is how is this measured? If alcohol is a poison, then why is it okay to have any alcohol? Is that just the limit where the symptoms and signs of illness will be kept at bay? And then the question, how do I know if I'm an alcoholic? Some of the most common symptoms of alcohol abuse are experiencing temporary blackouts, or short-term memory loss, exhibiting signs of irritability and extreme mood swings, making excuses for drinking such as to relax, deal with stress, or feel normal. Now, I don't know about you, but most people who I've met in my life who drink alcohol have experienced all of these. And if you're not drinking alcohol to relax or to deal with stress, then why are you drinking? I personally believe that alcohol addiction is one of the most damaging, not only to the person suffering, but the people around them as well. But I'm not doing this video to pass judgment on people who drink. I'm pointing the finger at the media and the people who promote this lifestyle because I think we can all agree that drinking alcohol doesn't provide any benefits whatsoever. Towards the end of this video, I think it will all become very clear as to why alcohol is promoted so much. But for now, we're gonna look at a few more side effects. What does alcohol do to the brain? It says here that even in the short term, alcohol affects areas of the brain controlling cognitive and motor functions, causing them to slow down. Alcohol impairs memory, judgment, and coordination, and disrupts sleep patterns. When used long term, alcohol may cause permanent brain damage. Well, the less sharp that people are mentally, the easier they are to control. Another thing that I just wanna put in here is that alcohol affects your ability to maintain and grow muscle. Studies have shown that alcohol consumption reduces muscle protein synthesis, which reduces the possibility of gaining muscle. It has also been revealed that alcohol negatively modifies hormone levels and decreases the body's metabolism, meaning the capability to decrease body fat becomes delayed. So this explains the weight gain that I experienced when I was younger and the the effect it had on my metabolism. We're all very aware that the diet and fitness industry is worth billions and billions of dollars. <laughs> and when you make it so normal for people to consume something that essentially makes them look less good, then companies know that they can profit from selling their solution. Money makes the world go round. And the key structure behind making money is by solving people's problems. And you can be sure that you will maximize profits if you present a solution to a problem that you created in the first place. 
The thing is we don't just have muscles in our body, we have muscles in our face as well. And to put it bluntly, I believe that alcohol accelerates the ageing process dramatically. And this is exactly what the beauty industry wants because the more insecure people feel, the more that they'll spend money. And finally, one of the biggest reasons why I choose not to drink alcohol is for spiritual reasons. The more alcohol that you consume, the more unconscious that you become. This is part of the reason why people love drinking so much, is that it impairs your cognitive ability. It gets you completely out of your head, you can't hear your thoughts anymore, it almost makes you numb. But the problem is, is that getting drunk at the time might feel good, but in the long run it will only cause problems. In addition to this, it halts the ability to develop psychic abilities, intuition, and the more spiritually detached people become, the more empty and lost they feel. So it's kind of like a downward spiral. You drink because you're unhappy, and then you're unhappy because you drink. So there are all the hard truths. Now, what I really want to make clear in this video is that I am not passing judgment. Every single video that I make is made with the intention to help people and enlighten them. But if you've watched this video and you're suddenly feeling inspired to quit alcohol altogether, I'm gonna tell you the things that I did to quit and walk you through a few mental exercises. If someone came to me and said, Yolanda, how do I quit alcohol? I would say first ask yourself this, why am I drinking alcohol? Is it because of lack of confidence? Does alcohol make you feel more like you can be yourself? Do you drink alcohol because of peer pressure? Because everybody else is drinking so you don't want to be left out? Are you drinking to deal with stress because there's something that you don't really want to face? Are you drinking out of habit? What you need to do is to be really, really honest with yourself and ascertain, why am I really drinking? If the reason is because of stress, the best thing to do is to face it head on. If there's an issue that is going on in your life right now that you're trying to escape from, it's so much better to face it with a sober mind and either think about a solution to the problem. And if it's a situation that you can't control, if you spend time working on yourself and working on being mindful and learning how to stop the negative thinking patterns developing in the first place, you will be a lot happier. But the thing is, it's not a quick fix. It's something that you develop over time. But trust me, the more that you develop yourself, the higher your self-worth will be and your self-esteem. If you're drinking for confidence, which is what a lot of people do, see it as a challenge to see how you can cope if you're not drinking. Most of the time when I go to a place and everybody else is drinking, I usually think, well, everybody else is drunk anyway, so <laughs> they're probably not even registering what I'm saying or what I'm doing. That doesn't mean to say just go crazy, <laughs> but it is something to bear in mind. Confidence is something that can be built on. I've done a whole video about it. You do not need alcohol as a crutch for confidence. Trust me. I have been to nightclubs completely sober and I have been the first one on the dance floor. So if I can do it, so can you. And if you're drinking for peer pressure, I mean... <laughs> That's the easiest one personally. I can vouch that going into a room and owning the fact that you're making a conscious choice to go against the grain can only lead to people actually respecting you. And in most cases, they probably feel inspired. By the way, I just dropped some water. <laughs> That's water. <laughs> this bottle is just... If you've become so used to drinking alcohol as part of your lifestyle, you might feel like it's a really scary big step to just be sober constantly and live the sober lifestyle, but let me tell you now, you really, really are not missing out on anything by quitting alcohol. I am living, breathing proof that the sober lifestyle is awesome. <laughs> your health will be better. You'll become more intelligent. Your cognitive ability will improve. You'll look better. You'll feel better. I could go on, but I think I've sold it enough. If you stay till the end, you're a real one. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. This is the raw, unfiltered truth as to why I don't drink. Comment down below your thoughts, and if you enjoyed this video, please make sure to drop it a like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. Love you, bye.